I'd like to talk a little bit about selection and stacking of cattail. It seems to be challenging for some folks and it doesn't have to be. The first thing I like to do is I want to pick out the tail myself. I want to go to the fly shop. I want to dig around and find one that's suitable to me for the application I'm looking for, whether it's for perhaps a wing on a green butt skunk, which I might want to find this more translucent hair up in here. It tends to be a little bit longer. Or if I'm tying a royal wool for H&L variant, I might want to be looking down in this area up to here. Whatever it is I'm wanting that tail for, I want to select it myself. But one of the things I encourage you to do is take along a pocket comb because all this hair and storage is matted down and you can make your life a lot easier in selecting that tail if you simply take the time to comb through the tail and loosen the hair up, straighten it up a little bit. And once you've done that, it's a lot easier to be able to go into that tail and pull it up and look at it. And what I'm looking for is I'm looking for broken tips. I'm looking for how straight it is, hinging on what I want it to do. I'm going to look at the back of the tail. There's the back side of a tail is a little different hair in this area than on the front of the tail up in here. So select the tail according to the application. And again, just simply comb through it, look for the evenness of hair, and decide what's going to be appropriate for your application. Now when actually tying, the first thing I'm going to do is remove a lot of the shorter hairs. What you're going to find is there's a, a different grouping of sizes of hair. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove quite a bit of this material. I'm going to come up a little further and I may find another layer of a slightly different diameter of hair. And then I may have the hair that I'm actually wanting near the tip. Now let's take a closer look at those three groupings of hair. You'll notice on the right hand side we have a hair that tends to be pretty fine. And it's also fairly short. Then you have this middle section here. It's a little bit larger in diameter. Tends to be maybe a little straighter than these little guys over here. And then you have, sorry about that, and then you have this hair over here. This hair is not an impossible to stack. Even if you cut this hair to the same length, it's going to be extremely difficult to get these hairs to stack because they're a little more kinky and they tend to have much, much physically less weight that will not allow them to stack down at these tips. And then one other factor, of course, is the scales on this hair make it more challenging to stack the hair in this direction to begin with because the nature of the scales want to cause these tips not to slide into one another. Hair in a stacker will stack this direction very, very easily because the scales are to your advantage, but not so the other way. So you have a lot of disadvantage to begin with. You have this lightweight hair, you have this sort of medium weight hair, and then you have this hair, which is the one I would probably use for most of my fly tying purposes. Now I've taken that clump of hair that had the longest fibers but also the largest diameter fibers, those are the ones that are, you're going to find tend to stack much more easily. They're pretty uneven now, but that's not a great problem. As long as you've removed those shorter, lighter weight hairs, and you've also washed your calf tail, not only combing it, but washing it will make a huge difference in the ability of these hairs to stack. Removing the quote unquote natural oils that a lot of people like to think actually help to float the fly, but in fact actually attract dirt. What we're going to do now is take this little clump, put it into my closed-in stacker, put on the cap, and simply tap it down. And you'll see this hair stacks quite nicely once it's prepared properly. And that's a process of stacking a calf tail.